topics. So basically I've had this idea where I want to start talking about all the little things about the clarinet and just music in general that often people like me don't talk about because we just assume that it's knowledge that most people know. So these kinds of questions that you might have as a beginner clarinetist, you might be in high school, you might even be in college and you might not know these simple little things. So I'm going to be going over in detail all these little, little concepts on the clarinet that we haven't really talked a lot about. So I'm going to be diving deep into things like articulation, reed maintenance, adjusting reeds, tone, voicing, how to create a beautiful practice space, all of those little things. So make sure that you hit subscribe on YouTube to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my weekly episodes. Okay, so the first video in this little like, clarinet basics series is going to be everything on reeds. So I'm going to be covering how to store your reeds, why you need to store them right, how to break in reeds and why you need to break in reeds, choosing a reed, so choosing a reed brand, choosing a reed strength and also how to adjust reeds. I've had a lot of questions on clipping reeds and sanding down reeds and why you would adjust a reed. So I'm going to cover all of them in this one video. Topic number one that I'm going to be covering is reed storage. Now, first of all, I'm going to cover how to not store your reeds. So I see a lot of young beginners, you know, in their first year of playing and they go, oh, the clarinet is so annoying to set up. So I'm just going to leave my reed on my mouthpiece and that way I don't have to deal with it, with putting it on, taking it off, anything like that. It's just gonna stay on there. Now, first of all, you're not letting your reed dry out properly. So you're probably gonna get some mold growing on the inside of your mouthpiece against your reed, which isn't great. And it is also going to warp, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. So if you are a beginner, I suggest that you put your reeds in the little sleeves that you would get with your reeds. So you would either get like a plastic one. So Van Doren, Didario and Rico use these little plastic cases. Um, if you get a cheaper brand, this is a Gonzales, some random cheap brand. Um, they might come with cardboard sleeves. So make sure you put them back in here. Now the reason that you would use these sleeves is it makes sure that your reed is drying on a flat surface. If you leave your reed to dry just on your mouthpiece, it's not drying on a completely flat surface because the reed isn't against anything that's flat. Part of it is, isn't against anything. So when it dries, the reed isn't necessarily going to dry flat, which means that the very tip of the reed could end up warping, which means that it gets a little curve in it. Now, if I can't really see any warpage in any of my clarinet reeds. It's a lot easier to see warpage in thicker reeds. So um, if I have a look at my bass clarinet reeds or my saxophone reeds, it's a lot easier to be able to see that very slight um, curve in the very tip of the reed. And that's what we want to prevent. So if you're a beginner, I recommend definitely storing it in those um, little sleeves that you get with your reeds. If you're a little bit higher up and you want to upgrade to a better reed case, but you don't exactly have a big budget, I recommend grabbing one of these types of things. This is a Diodario little reed case that holds four reeds in here. I currently have some Ligier based clarinet reeds in here. Um, but this is numbered, so it means you know what reed is what, it has one, two, three, four, and it makes sure that your reeds are all against a flat surface. And this is just so that you have four reeds in one spot rather than having those plastic sleeves that are probably not great for the environment. Um, you can just keep on reusing these. Um, it means they're all in one spot and they're stored against a flat surface. So they're not going to warp. Now, an even better option than these, although they are a little bit more pricey, is to get an actual good quality reed case. Now, I got my one sent to me for free from Payas Music. Um, this one is very fancy and has a hygrometer and a thermometer. Um, and I have my Instagram name engraved on here, which is very awesome. But basically, this just keeps my reeds stored against a flat piece of glass. So when it dries, 
they're not going to get warped or anything and I can store 10 in here. It also has space for a humidity pack if I want to make sure that my reeds are being nice and looked after um, no matter like what temperature I'm in and no matter you know the humidity or anything like that. So that is reed storage. All right, now the second section of this video is going to be on breaking in reeds. Now, to be completely honest, I have just spent about 10 minutes on Google, literally just before filming this, searching up different ways that people break in reeds, why it's important to break in reeds, reed soaking and getting waterlogged and the benefits and all, everyone has their own opinions and people are gonna tell me that what I do is wrong and, but everyone has their own way of doing things and basically you just need to find what works best. Now, when people talk about breaking in a reed, what they're talking about is basically once you get a reed straight out of the box, you don't just pull it out and then do a two hour orchestra concert on that reed because that will kill that reed and the next time you take the reed out of its case, it will not sound good anymore. You will kill the reed. Now, I've tried to find like some science on this and look, I'm not a scientist. I haven't done a PhD on reeds or anything like that. But basically breaking in reeds is just supposed to help your reeds last a lot longer. Now, to be completely honest, I am extremely lazy with my reeds and when I was back in uni, I used to break in my reeds, so it take me about a week to break in my reeds. Um, but right now, I honestly don't play as much as I did back in university. I'm not playing three to four hours a day anymore. Um, and I just don't have the time to sit down and work on my reeds and break them in because I'm just teaching. I just need a reed that works and it sounds good. But I'm going to try and run through the basics of breaking in a reed. Now, I've heard so many different things and I don't know, I'm kind of also getting a little bit overwhelmed by reeds. Now, the first thing I kind of wanted to talk about was reeds getting waterlogged um, and what exactly that means and how do you know if a reed is waterlogged? So, I've just put this um, student reed size one and a half sitting in a bowl of water for about 10 minutes. And if you have a look at it, it looks extremely yellow and near the tip, it's also that kind of translucent as well. So you can really see that that reed is waterlogged. That's what a waterlogged reed looks like. And the reason it looks so dark in color is because reeds are porous. They have all of these this space in it and when you soak it in water, the space gets filled up with all of that moisture, which is why it looks a lot darker. Um, and you can kind of see if you look at the the butt end of the reed, I'll do like a close up, but um, you can see all of those little pores in the reed and they're like little tubes. So they go all the way from the bottom of the reed, all the way to the blank part of the reed. Um, and you can also do this little experiment with the reed to also see that there's all these little air pockets in there and how they get filled up with water and everything. So I'm gonna show you this little trick. You can do that at home with me. So I've got a brand new reed that is straight out of the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few drops of water on this part of the reed. All right, so I've got this layer of water on the reed. I don't know if you can really see. Now I am going to blow on the butt end of the reed and you should be able to see some little bubbles. See the, all those little bubbles that are coming out of the reed? So those are the little tubes that run through the cane and go all the way from the butt end to the very end. You can also do the opposite. <laughs> and if you put drops of water on where they are and then suck it through the butt end, you can drink the water that's on the end. So, so I've just got some water that's traveled all the way through. And then also if you look at the butt end of the reed, you can see all of the dark circles, which are the tubes that the water has traveled through. 
So when you're breaking in a reed, you're just trying to slowly expose that reed to the moisture. Although like I like to break in my reeds slowly when I do them properly. I play my reed for five minutes and then the next day I'll play it for 10 to 15 and I'll slowly play it for longer and longer until after about a week I can play it for a concert if I wanted to. But some people just soak their reeds. I personally don't soak my reeds. I feel like that's just like exposing it to all of the moisture and maybe if you expose it to all of the moisture then your reed won't get waterlogged when you're playing. Basically if you play on a waterlogged reed it just doesn't sound fantastic so you don't want to be playing on a waterlogged reed in a performance so that I suppose that's the whole reason why you break in a reed and it just makes them last longer as well. So that is breaking in reeds. Everyone has their own method, their own opinion. Find what works best for you. All right, next topic is how to choose a reed that works best for you. Now, obviously I have my own opinions on what reeds I like best and I have my own strength, but what works best for me isn't what's going to suit you best. If you are a brand new beginner, you just basically need a reed that is from a good company and not some random thing that you order off eBay that no one's heard of. Get a reed from a good company. The one I would recommend is to get Rico Reeds from the brand Diodaro, they sell Rico Reeds. I don't have any Ricos with me, but here are the Rico Royals, they're now called Diodaro Royals. So um, either the orange box or the blue box. I would recommend starting with the orange box. They are the cheapest reeds that you can get that are great for beginners. They're cheap, but they work very well. Um, when you want to step up a little bit, get the blue box, the Rico Royals. These are a little bit harder in strength. You need to look at a reed strength chart because if you're going from one brand of reed, so you're going from the orange box to the blue box, you need to make sure that they're the same strength, that they compare exactly right. So you're not getting a reed that is of a different strength. Um, the other brands that are really great for once you've graduated from the blue box is Van Doren's and Diodario. So either of them are fantastic. There are probably others out there, but I have only played Van Doren's or Diodario's. Um, during high school, I played on Van Doren's. So Van Doren has a few different makes of their reeds. I recommend starting on their navy blue, just their normal Van Doren traditional reeds. That's what I started on. Again, make sure you look at the reed strength comparison chart because they're probably going to be a little bit harder than um, your beginning reeds that you start on. Um, I also use the Van Doren V12s when I was in uni. I don't have any boxes on me because I don't use them anymore, um, but they come in like a little silver wrapper so they're in like a silver kind of gray box and they also have the v21s which were released um not that long ago and i'm fairly sure they are in a blue box so those are the van doren's ones that i would recommend then you also have diodario so i've got two different types of diodario reads here so they have their more traditional um i, I don't know what they call them just reserve um, and they have a, a blue kind of square on it um, then you have the reserve classics which have the purple square on it and you have the reserve evolutions which are the newest one that have an orange square on them personally i use um, reserve evolutions in strength 3.5 but you just need to find what works best for you all of the options that i've given you are by great brands and they all work you're not going to go wrong you're going to be much better off going with van doren diodario or rico if you're a beginner than by just ordering something really random off of ebay or something like that so make sure you get a good brand the next thing you need to look at uh, when you're getting reads is what strength you need as well. So I started on a strength 1.5. Now what strength means is how thick the tip of the reed is, basically. So um, if I were to play on a 1.5 reed, I would struggle to get a sound out of it because um, it is so thin that you don't need very much air at all to get it to work. So they're great for beginners because you just get a sound out. You don't have to have a developed embouchure or air support or anything like that. You just blow and the reed will work. That's why you would start on a lower strength reed. So I started on 1.5s when I was 12 years old. 
when my embouchure, like my mouth muscles, got a bit stronger, I moved up to 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. I was playing on 4s for a bit of time, and then now I found that 3.5s are the most comfortable strength for me. Now, usually your teacher will be able to tell you if your read is sounding too soft or too hard, but also I can really feel if a read is too soft. If the read's too soft for me, I'm going to struggle to get a sound out of it because I am going to close off the read. My muscles are going to be too strong for the read, I'm going to close it off, and I can't, you know, give my full musical potential, I suppose, to that read because I have to kind of back off and be really gentle when I play on it. If a read is too hard, I will struggle to get a sound out of it. I will have to blow as hard as I can. I'll have to really squeeze to get the sound to come out. And it just feels so tiring and just like a lot of effort. So I can kind of feel when the read strength isn't quite right. So find what works best for you. And if you're still unsure, your teacher will be able to help you. Another question that I got was to kind of explain all the parts of the read and what these read companies are talking about when they talk about the vamp and the tip and the blank and all of that kind of stuff. What are they talking about, basically? So um, you can refer to these brands' websites. I'm going to link just heaps of things down below, like some read cases and um, reads, I don't know, I'm just going to link some stuff down below. Um, but basically, the blank is the bit of the read that hasn't been cut or anything. This is the blank. So I know, for example, um, with the Diodario reads, the difference between the Reserve, Reserve Classics, is it the Reserve Classic? Yes, the Reserve Classic Purple Box and the Reserve Evolution Orange Box is the Evolutions have a thicker blank. So that's this bit here. That's the blank. Then the tip of the read is the tip of the read, the very end of the read. That's nice and easy to figure out. And then this part of the read, this is the vamp. So basically the difference between the orange box and purple box steer diaries is because the blank is thicker, it means that the vamp is going to go down on a larger angle than the classic. So the evolutions I'm going to overemphasize the angle but the evolutions would be going down like that whereas the classics would be going down like that um so it means the evolutions would be like thicker like at this point I suppose if that makes sense so that's what they're talking about with all the different components of the reads all right final topic in this video is going to be on adjusting reads I've had a lot of questions on adjusting reads and quite honestly I think people place a lot more importance on it it's honestly not that important if you find a fantastic read. I haven't adjusted my reads um, for a couple of years now just because I've been happy with how my reads have been playing. I haven't really had any issues, um, but you can adjust your reads. So the two main ways that I adjust my read um, is by clipping them and by sanding them. So to clip them, you don't grab some scissors and just cut your read. I've seen that before and that stresses me out. Your read always needs to have that exact curve on it to match your mouthpiece. You can't just grab a pair of scissors and go chop to make your read harder. Mm -mm. So that's the point of um, clipping your read is it makes it play a little bit harder. Also, if you have a few little chips in there, you can clip it, but it will make the read play a bit harder because uh, the tip will be thicker. So in terms of clippers, the ones that I have is a Cordia clipper. I actually bought this one secondhand off eBay. I'm not sure if they make them anymore. I know Van Doren makes them, although they're quite expensive and they make ones that are specific for their cut of reed. So you can get a V12 or a V21 reed clipper. But the one that I have is a Cordier clipper and they make these for, I know, clarinet, saxophone, whatever instrument you play. Um, so if I were to clip the reed, I would try and clip it as little as possible. So I open up this little cage thingy. I place the reed flat on the clipper. I'm sure if you get one of these, you can figure it out. So I place it flat. I can clip it in place. I can adjust how much of the reed I can see, how much of the reed is going to be clipped. So if I clip it like that, that's how much going to be clipped. Obviously, it's not straight. So you try and clip as little as possible. 
I'll get it lined up and then show you how much I would clip. That's how much I would clip, if you can see that. It is a not even a millimeter. It is absolutely tiny. And then all I do is I, I press this little lever, it clips the reed, and the tip is still that shape. And that'll just mean if I have a really soft reed, I can clip it and it'll just make it a better strength for me. Um, but it also doesn't sound as good as the original reed. I can see like a little, the little shaving from the reed. It's so tiny. So that's clipping the reed. I haven't done that for a couple of years. I do it for my students if they have a really chipped reed and they're desperate. Otherwise, I don't really clip my reeds. All right, the next way to adjust a reed is with sandpaper. So if you are adjusting your reed with sandpaper, don't just go into your garage and take some sandpaper that your dad has laying around. You need to find the um, highest number in terms of grit from whatever hardware store you're at. So in Australia, we go to Bunnings and you go to the sandpaper aisle and you find the sandpaper that has the highest number on it. And that means it is going to be the finest sandpaper. So this sandpaper, if I feel it, I'm not getting any scratches. I can feel that it's not as smooth as paper, um, but it, it is slightly like grippy and that's what you're looking for the finest number I think if you can find like over a thousand or something that would be fantastic now when I sand my reeds I don't like do anything on the top of here I deal with the bottom of my reed the flat part of my reed and what that does is it makes the reed softer actually so say if you have if you're playing on a three and a half reed, but it's like, oh, it's a little bit resistant to play on. I need something that feels a little bit more easy blowing. You get your sandpaper, you put it on a flat surface, such as a table. You get your reed and you place it flat on the sandpaper and you very gently run it across the sandpaper a couple of times and then you try it. And then you might do it again because it needs a little bit more. Don't over sand your reed. Don't go, eh, it'll destroy it. It'll make it way too soft. It's easier to just work in little tiny increments um, until you find what's perfect for you. So that is sanding. You can also balance your reed. So if you were to put your reed on your clarinet and I'll show you. <laughs> Easier for me to demonstrate. Okay, if I were to check if this reed is balanced, I would put the mouthpiece in my mouth, twist the clarinet one way, and then twist the clarinet the other way and play it, and see if they feel and sound the same. So let's check if this reed's balanced. This reed feels balanced to me, but say if one side felt more resistant than the other, that means your reed is not balanced. So say if this way felt really resistant, that means the part of the reed that's vibrating, the bit that's not hard on your lip, that is too thick. So you might grab your sandpaper and very, very gently run across that side of the reed very, very gently um, to try and get it be a bit thinner and make it more balanced. Um, it's great if you have a reed knife to be able to do that. I personally don't own a reed knife. I haven't invested in one yet, although I should. And that is what you would use that for. But if you don't have a reed knife, you could just use some sandpaper. And I think that is everything on reeds. We've learnt how to store your reeds properly how to break in reeds, choosing reeds, and adjusting reeds. Hopefully that is all of your questions answered. If you have any other questions, please comment down below. Um, and also let me know what else you'd like me to put in the Clarinet Basics series. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love it if you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of these episodes. Hope you all have a lovely day and good luck with your clarinetting. Thank <laughs> you.